Good morning, family. Good afternoon. Good evening to you. Welcome to the mental house, y'all, with me, your host. Right? Okay, check this out. I really want to have a conversation with y'all. Don't get mad. Don't trip. Okay? But I really want to know how much y'all agree with me or disagree at this point. That it's going to take both sides in terms of the community and the police departments to make any kind of um any kind of solution work. Okay. I, I believe in order for there to be any kind of solution or resolvement or any semblance of some normalcy to the shooting and killing of black and brown people is going to take a cooperative effort from both. Now, a lot of y'all might not agree with me on that one. And I uh, was talking to a black lieutenant on yesterday, a former black lieutenant. And I want to share some of his uh, observations with y'all in terms of what he feels about that. I wish I could talk to Leonard Wells, but he's dead. He died from COVID. Um, but I think y'all would love Leonard Wells because he's a retired lieutenant or Arthur Jones, who is a chief. Went through the ranks in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is one of the most racist places in the world for uh, black people. Um, one of the hardest cities in the world for black people. But these brothers managed to um, hold some semblance of accountability to the officers and the people on the streets. Arthur Jones had what he had, a quality of life issues. And if you was out violating those quality of life issues, him and his guys, boys was going to bring you down. Y'all know how we do. You know, like we'll be going down the street. You'll be driving down a side street. Somebody know somebody on the other side of the road. Now, instead of them pulling over and having a conversation with these individuals, we have become so ignorant, rude, disrespectful, and these are things that you can't blame on white people. See, there's a certain amount of um, irresponsibility that we are uh, partaking in, and then we want to blame white people, and I ain't for that group. I'm not even for that role. Okay, because this is the kind of ignorance that I'm talking about. When you stand outside, you're holding up traffic, you're on the side street, and you so sick with it that you want people to either go around you or wait until you finish having your conversation before the traffic moves again. Nobody in their right mind does that unless they are suffering from a self-esteem so low. that They got to make everybody behind them feel like I'm important so you gonna wait till I get finished that's really a mental issue and this is why this is the mental house my brother Gap Turner said I'm gonna say it again the hood's a graveyard it's a straight up cemetery full of walking corpses that talk obituaries think about that think about what I just said the, the the words that are coming out of half of the people's mouth is dead, full of dead man's bones. And they don't want no life breathed into them bones because we've had produced from our loins, from our culture, some of the greatest minds that the world has ever seen. Okay? I believe that we are the moral compass of the world, especially being the first people of the of the world. I believe that we're the moral compass. So when I say stuff like the hood's a graveyard, a straight up cemetery full of walking corpses that talk obituaries, that means we living beneath our design place and we're not walking in our authority. We're leave, we're living beneath beneath the standard line. Okay, these kind of behaviors I want to talk about is why do we feel the need 
to lump all the police together. I again, I've told y'all, I got family members who are law enforcement, um, fire battalions, police chiefs. I uh, and my best friend, one of my best friends, the person I grew up with right now, is now the, the sheriff of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Ernell Lucas. What I'm going to say is, and I know Ernell to be an upstanding, great brother who took a shot in the face, buckshots in his face in the line of duty. Okay? Um, he, he served his country. I mean, he served his city. And he grew up with us. So we know he was one of us. And I don't know about a lot of y'all. A lot of y'all have an anti-police um, mindset. I don't have that. Because my generation was, we were more like the spook that sat by the door. We wanted to infiltrate all of these organizations and all of these institutions that um, the, the master had designed to keep us in bondage. We felt that our only way, and I still think, Regardless of what crazy people say, regardless of who's telling you it's worthless, it's hopeless, don't never be hopeless. See, but my generation believed once we infiltrated all of these institutions of white supremacy and changed the culture, changed the narrative, then eventually we would change the outcome. I still believe that. I know you got people like Corey Holcomb telling y'all don't vote. It don't mean nothing. It's not. But let me tell y'all something. Don't listen to people who really don't know enough to solidify your peace. I work campaigns. I bet you Corey ain't never worked no campaign in his life. Right? And not only that, you can see what has happened in Minnesota. You can see when you begin to change the culture of the faces. Now, I'm not talking about Cameron. You always got people like him down in uh, Kentucky. That's the people that look like us that's got to be dealt with. Okay? But there are some people that have a vested interest in our freedom as well. And I'm not going to negate that these people exist. They always have and they always will. That's where John Brown came from, okay? Out of that vein, Viola Luso and all the countless other, Heather Heyer, people who lost their lives fighting for justice for other people. Don't ever lose sight of that. Because if you do, you're not, you're not alive. You're not alive. So what I'm saying to y'all is understand that this is going to take a double effort of police and community resources and community and police cooperation, community policing, innovative ways. Yes, yeah, some departments are going to have to uh, reallocate some of their monies because you got enough weapons stockpiled. They, it, it, and so we don't need any more uh, of the budget put away for that. We need monies put away for, for um, and we need resources for community involvement in policing. And I guarantee you, if people begin to feel like they are part of something and not the target of something, there may be some hope. Maybe not in our day, Tommy. But maybe in our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren and our great-great-grandchildren. They'll see a different America than we live. It will. So I want to give a shout-out to everybody and say hello to you. Good morning to you. And stand by because I want to bring you a couple of uh, 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 stories today that I think is really interesting. And I think it's worth hearing. Okay. I'll see you shortly in the next video.